Okay, everybody, welcome to the Rings of Saturn. Uh, I'm gonna start a new game. Start from scratch. As you can see, I've played more than once. I kind of know what I'm doing. It's a, it's a good game. Here we go. Uh, sure. You have to question everything. Why do people go missing in the rings? The company blames pirates. But why would anyone resort to piracy? There is no money to be made there. No glory. Only fear and, ultimately, death. Why would you choose that life? And why doesn't the company just blow them all up with an orbital strike? Don't tell me they don't know where they're hiding, with that array of telescopes watching everything. The company wants you to be an obedient little drone. Master ever doesn't care if it shoots ice, rocks, ships, or stations. They know that, and they hope you won't figure it out. They aren't your friend. Question everything. Okay, so this is Rings of Saturn, and because I've already played before, it doesn't give me the tutorial. Maybe I'll make a video on that later, but eh. Oh, probably shouldn't even get into that tab. So the first time you're in this tab, <clears throat> maybe like give a brief overview of maybe what you're looking for out there. You probably don't really have an idea what you're doing uh, at the start. At the very start, you don't have a lot of money either. You only have 20,000, and you have 100,000, you're insured for repairs, so you can go out there and take a bruising and still come back and be able to fix your ship. Um, now, this screen's really important, but we can talk about that later. There's a lot to go over in that ship, or er, that ship screen. Here you can check out new ships to buy but uh we're just gonna we're just gonna go make some money like i said it's a brand new game so the log screen doesn't have anything uh let's see if we can get lucky real quick and what we want is a, a uh we want a geologist but i doubt we can get one oh okay a self-taught no experienced geologist for 7300 is actually really good so I will hire that person because the crew, the crew you hire on gets more experience over time. You don't have to go in here and hire a new one over and over again or anybody new. You don't have to hire and fire your crew. Your crew will get better and will eventually hit uh, expert master or whatever. They'll hit, they'll hit the highest ranking they can eventually if you just keep the same people. So if you can get one for a really low price, that price will barely go up if you keep them happy. And you do that through services. I am playing on the experimental branch of this game, which means I get tons of quality of life options. Like, I get the latest and greatest updates, maybe things they're, well, experimenting with. And a lot of it is uh, actually really nice. Uh, this screen, um, we can go into it later, but... For now, it's going to dump us out at the very edge of the rings of Saturn. And it's not going to cost us a whole bunch. That's really all you got to know at the start. Oh, look. And the station's lit up because it's Christmas.
Alright, here we go. So the first time you play, you probably won't know how to fly your ship, and you'll be using left click and drag to tell your ship where you want to go. But what you really want to do is, well, maybe not the first thing you want to do, but you want to learn how to drive by yourself. And the way I do that is I just rotate the ship with the Q and E keys, and then I start using wads to fly around. I've played similar games to this before. I've played this before. I know what I'm. I kind of know what I'm doing when I'm flying around. So this indicator is telling me my direction, how fast I'm flying in one direction or not. Those red rings were signaling I was in danger because uh, I don't have an autopilot that's good enough to tell to uh, reduce the amount of g-forces when I spin my ship round and round. Like that. Ooh. So what I'm trying to do right now is gobble up a little chunks of stuff like that. And then I'll go and sell those little chunks for money later on. Uh, some of the things you might want to keep in mind is there is con there's a control panel for everything. And then some buttons if you... Let's see if it'll show it. There it is. If you double tap on some of the controls... Uh, it will do things like keep your excavator open, which is the little beak at the front of my ship. So if I double tap, now my beak will stay open. Whereas I can just press and hold and it'll uh, close. Uh, some of the options I like to turn down in the... Let's see here. In the graphics, I like to turn off background particles because that way I can actually tell what what are real asteroids and which ones are uh, not real. So I, I hate the background particles. I, I hate flying around in the debris, in the debris field and you know, I can't tell what is real and what's not. So I turn that all the way down. Uh, the explosion particles. If I if I blow apart an asteroid, I want to see where the chunks are going to fly out at. So if I leave this up, I can't tell which chunks I'm going after or if there are any. Because sometimes there are not. And that gets annoying. And uh, the only other annoying option, I believe, so I, if I can find it here, is the bloom on HUD. I turn that off, because if I turn it on, now when you try to look at the HUD on the over and the right, which ones are actually in use, or what buttons are in use, it burns your eye holes out. So I turn it off, Oh, well, I think probably you can give, give a good enough example there. Uh, let's turn Bloom on. There we go. Yeah. Can you actually see and read those comfortably? Is this what you like to see and you can't really see what's going on in the background out in space? I don't like it. Some people do. It's just not what I prefer. So personal preference there. Anyway, let's just get back to the game and play around. There's a lot to go over, but we'll just address things as they come. Uh, the visual feed, I just leave it on its own thing. It zooms in and out all by itself. I don't have to touch it. You can control that if you want. And uh, in certain situations, it can be useful, but I just got used to not messing with it. By the time I realized I could, eh, I already gotten used to it. I don't care anymore. I do have a weapon on my ship, and it's a projectile weapon, so it's good for anti-ship combat and shooting the asteroids. And you can see I'm pressing and holding right click so that the autopilot aims where my mouse cursor is. Oh, that's iron. I don't want that. It doesn't sell for much. And you may have also noticed when I started a new game... I'm on difficulty challenging, which actually isn't really that much of a challenge. It just means that the game can throw events at you 
without ha without regard to what your ship state is in or your or how good or bad your finances are. So it could potentially be very swingy, uh, make make the game unplayable or playable. Eh. It's never been a problem every time I've done it, and it actually makes getting rich quick a lot easier. And hopefully during this playthrough I can show you why. Now you notice I didn't shoot that uh, piece of asteroid, but I got close enough to burn it with my thrusters. Because when you expel propellant out, it comes out of your ship very hot. Hot enough to burn these ice asteroids. So all these asteroids in these rings are ice. And so when you make ice really hot, it melts. I don't know if you saw that, but a piece of uh, that piece of ore got stuck in the beak of the excavator. Probably got stuck on the neck and didn't get swallowed. And then it tried to regurgitate it out the beak while it was closing. So I took care of that by opening the beak and uh, boosting with my booster real quick. And then it shoved it to the back of the cargo hold. So you notice I've turned my main propulsion towards the incoming asteroid fields. So I'm trying to go a little deeper. And then I'm using the main engine. And sometimes I combine the main engine with the thrusters using the W key to slow down. <clears throat> now I could be shooting asteroids to break them apart. But I find sometimes it's a lot easier just to use your main thruster to break the asteroids apart. This is an excellent example. Instead of slamming into that asteroid, I melted it with my thrusters. That was a really good example. So on one hand, this ship, the starter ship, has some... They're terribly placed and also very well placed thrusters. So if you really get used to piloting this ship, it has a very unique uh, thruster cluster setup. And it can be really annoying when you first start the game because if something even breathes on your ship, it will get damaged. <laughs> Whereas some of the later ships you can get, the thrusters are placed in such a way that you can kind of ram your ship into anything and be fine. So that little asteroid is being a little uh, a little tricky to melt with thrusters, so I just turn around and burn it with my main torch real quick. I could have shot it. Just like that. I'm kind of... I'm thinking about saving my shots. I've only got a thousand kilograms worth of uh, ammunition. I'm going to save that in case I get into a fight early. So if you're paying attention at the start, you kind of saw, or you did see, how much each resource is worth of value. So the most valuable resources are W, V, PD, PT, and B. H2O is not that valuable, and neither is iron, Fe. And you go, why don't you call it by the whatever it's named in the periodic table? Because that's not what it's called in the game. I mean, yes, those are the periodic abbreviations for what it's supposed to be called on the on the screen, but what it's called on screen is just BE. Or it's called Fe. So, just to make things simple, because not everybody, not everybody wants to use scientific, the, the appropriate names for everything when it's just displayed as whatever it is. 
Everybody wants to use the full name or knows what the full name are, so just call it what it's showing on screen. Make it easy for yourself and everyone else. If you call palladium and platinum what they are, and uh, and then it's only abbreviated like that, some people are going to be confused. Like, well, which one's palladium? Which one's platinum? So that's why I just call them PD, PG. It's not really worthwhile chunks. So the further to the right you go, the richer the resources get. But right here at the start of the belt, it, it's not that big of a difference. Like, yeah, you will get to, like, richer resources, quotation marks, the further in you go. Because there's only two options when you're, when you're, when you're diving. There's to the right, which is further in, and to the left, which is back to the station. And of course you can go up and down, but that's circling around Saturn. So to the right is closer, to the left is further. Pretty easy, fairly simple. There's no way to get really lost in this space game, and there's no way to break away from Saturn, and there's no way to, well, there's no way to reach Saturn either. So far. Well, as far as I know. So I'm just gonna keep casually just making my way to the right. And I'm keeping an ear out for my LiDAR. Eventually, it'll go beep, boop. I'm just waiting for some beeps and bops to happen while I just slowly meander my way through here and make some money, hopefully. It's not a very worthwhile chunk. It does not take very long with that main thruster to burn through the asteroids, as you can see. I barely need to touch the. Oh. Yeah, I barely need to tr touch the thrust, and all of a sudden the asteroid's melting. Now I'm not gonna go chase that piece of BE that just went flying. It's not worth the amount of damage I'll take trying to capture that piece. So if a chunk goes flying fast and far, it's not really worth it to go chase it down. It is the most valuable resource, BE, but it's not... 9 times out of 10, it's not worth even bothering chasing it. Like, if you can get it easily, then sure, chase after it. But if you can't get it within like the first couple of seconds of it flying around, don't even bother. In this first dive, you're probably not going to get too many events. This is more like your tutorial, your extended tutorial of how to fly your ship. So goof around, try stuff out. Uh, I should probably cover how to get back to the station here in a second. Well, once I determine that none of these resources are valuable. Oh! Turned too fast too much, and I threw one of the resources out of my cargo hold. Hate it when that happens. Alright, so let's cover how to stop. 
press and hold the X key. Is what I'm doing right there. And that makes it so I can, the autopilot takes over and quote unquote stops me. It's not really a stop. It makes me move relative to how Saturn's spinning. So the, the whole asteroid field is spinning around Saturn. So if I press the X key, it'll make me stop moving, quote unquote, to the make uh, to relative to how the rings are moving around Saturn. Oh, there goes another valuable chunk of BE. Oops. Now I might be able to get that 1200 piece. Just because it's not moving fast. I mean, it is moving fairly quickly, but it's not unreachable. It just takes a good takes a good pilot basically. I'm not saying I'm the best pilot ever, but you know. I'm kinda decent at it. One of the things you'll probably notice is that the ship is not zooming in and out on its own. I'm controlling all of the zoom function. Which is like a godsend when you start playing this game, because you'll notice very quickly that the game likes to do this kind of crap to you all the time. And it drives you crazy if you're not in control of doing that. And that's just in the options here. I use smooth camera, and they pushed that feature over to the experimental branch. And I'm pretty sure that's got pushed to live. So if you use the other camera options, it shouldn't do that. If you use the default one, it'll auto zoom in and out and it drove me insane what is that chunk? it's not worth it 32 kilograms of anything nothing that would be the BE chunk. That must not worth much. Well, 300 is worth something. 7,000? Mm. It's not worth it to chase after it right now. Hello, 8,000 chunk. Don't mind if I do. Now I'm going to boost a little bit just to push all the cargo down into the back. Hopefully clear the beak of the ship. Or the neck, I should say. Because all the ore likes to get trapped right at the neck. Hello, 18 chunk. Look at that. Especially when you spin the ship. The ship, I don't think it's <clears throat> as realistic, but the ship... When you turn the ship, all the ore chunks inside your cargo hold tend to fly out the front of it, or try to fly out the front, instead of being scattered all over inside the hole. Or either that or the hole, the cargo holds are so badly designed that when you try to turn the ship, it intentionally throws all of the, uh, as an intended feature, when you turn, it throws all of the ore to the front of the ship. 
So this is a, these cargo containers on the ships are really poorly designed if if that's the intended uh, feature when you turn when you maneuver the ship the the cargo hold should probably be designed a little bit better to where that it doesn't throw all your cargo out the front of the ship like, were these designs of these ships actually made by human beings who knows maybe that's part of the lore of the game is that no one cares Those are some nice little chunks. Look at that, that huge asteroid broken apart by my side thrusters and just by a little bit of thrust. So that's just a little tip for later on if you don't if you don't want to spend your entire life just blasting rocks with weapons, you can use your thrusters. Okay, so now that I'm not moving, but I have uh, the red rings of death, basically, that shows me that somebody who doesn't have a transponder is trying to attack me. And once I attack them a few times, They'll take off and go somewhere else. Once they realize that I'm not a target worth fighting, that person will take off. Bye bye. Whoa, whoa, whoa. See, the other ship is a bounty hunter and they're gonna go fight him. I just happened to line up in the exact direction. This does give me ex an excuse to show off the band-aid screen. Welcome to the band-aid screen. This is not a mechanic screen. This is a band-aid screen. How the band-aid screen works is very intuitive. Drag the red sliders to the right in order to make them yellow or green sliders. And you'll notice that all the green sliders slowly go down to the left and you can you can force these to go to the left so you can balance in between all of these and the more skilled your mechanic is I guess the better uh, or the higher chances or the the better your mechanic is the easier it is for them to apply band-aids to bring these back up to green the band-aid screen is very very intuitive and after you use it one time you probably never need it explained to you ever again. That's how the Band-Aid screen works. Very simple, very intuitive. Just make all the red thing, red and yellow things turn green by changing sliders to the right. You notice I don't have a mechanic and I could still do it, kind of. I also don't have a pilot, but somehow I could still fly the ship. So it's not like you need crew right at the start at all. I'm pretty sure even, well, no, the geologist thing does not happen if you don't have a geologist. I mean, they don't identify ore for you without an, a geologist. So now I'm full on ore and I don't know what to do. Just like if you're in the tutorial, you probably have no idea what you're doing. How do you, how do you get back? Do you gotta fly somewhere? All you have to do is go to the astrogator tab, click on the Enceladus Prime Station and click on plot a course and the autopilot will take over and take you back to the station. That's really poorly explained the tutorial. Uh, the last time I played the tutorial so maybe they've updated it but that's not very well explained when I first started and I was confused. But I figured it out eventually after clicking on all the stuff. After watching another YouTube video and seeing, seeing someone else do it, basically is how I figured it out. Which is really bad design by whoever made the game. You know, it should be a little intuitive. You don't want people alt-tabbing out of the game just to watch a YouTube video to figure out how to go back to the main station. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was a pretty good haul. Made 
Wait, 73,000? Now I can go repair. And these thrusters are super cheap, so instead of repairing, I'll just replace them outright. And then you can see my insured for 93,000 dropped from 100,000. So I'm insured. I can spend this much to repair stuff, and I still have all of that money I made to spend. So now that I've made it back for the first time, and I can actually buy stuff, what do I want? And I will tell you as soon as you get back, if you can afford it, this manipulator arm makes my life a lot easier. But I also want a mass driver to go with it. So if I can't, uh, if I can't get a mass driver to go with it, then I don't want that manipulator arm. I think I could get a mass driver. So I'm gonna go ahead and notice that's on the high stress hard point, and then on the low stress hard point, I will put a mass driver. Now then there's a whole bunch of other options. And I want to upgrade my power generation. So that'll be my turbine. But I also want to increase the capacity that I can hold. And that's the capacitor, the ultra capacity. How much power I can hold. And those bolts will cost 30,000 each. So ugh. I'm going to have to go out again before I... Uh, yeah, I'll have to go out and get more money before I can really upgrade any more. Uh, I want to increase. I want to make get bigger, bigger, better thrusters, or maybe not bigger and better, but more efficient. And right now, all of that is way too expensive. So I guess I'll just go back out and hopefully I'll get lucky. Maybe I'll get another crew member if they're not too expensive. And you'll notice that there are some crew members who uh, have no experience and are self-taught, but they're still crazy expensive, like over 10000 I'll see if I can find one. But those people usually have something else going on, and that's why they're so expensive. And I won't give that away, but expensive for a reason. I'm not seeing a mechanic, so I'm just going to go out. And I'm going to buy more mass driver ammo. There we go. That was fairly profitable for our first run. But the hardest part about this game is just figuring out how to fly the ship. Once you've flown the ship and you kind of know how to control it, and you can control it as easily as I just did, that's that's where the game really begins, and you can actually start playing. So now that I have this nifty little um, grabby arm, I'm going to turn off unmarked, and uh, I'm going to leave everything else as it is, except for I'm going to turn off iron and make sure that water is also turned off, or FE and H2O. And then my geologist won't even, or when they identify something as iron, or uh, as just water, which nothing will be just water. They'll, uh, it'll show on the screen and then it'll minimize the box around it. Just to declutter the screen. And you'll notice on the LiDAR there's words up there sometimes. Those are other ships. And I could go into my uh, pilot screen and talk to them 
but I don't want people following me around right now. I don't want anything they're going to offer me, so I could just safely ignore them. If I get close to them, they'll probably just follow me around and act as an escort. But I don't need to. These are basically like your tutorial. Well, they're not tutorial ships. They're they're trying to go in and make a profit too, but they effectively function as like a early game kind of bodyguard against events that could spawn in. So the faster you move away from these uh, ships, usually there's two right when you start in, the faster you move away from the, the quicker you can get other events to spawn. That's been my experience so far. And usually they're very friendly. So this guy's just out gathering ore. Oh. I have to turn that adrenaline booster off already and I don't even have a pilot. <laughs> This looks like a good stop, or a spot to stop, I should say. Notice I'm pressing the W key and the shift key to fire the thrusters and the main thruster. Or the main engine and thrusters, I should say. Just slow down. So, pushing those keys together is kind of a secret combo. Or, well, not really a secret, but once you realize that combo, you can slow down and speed up a lot faster. And that's why I like the manipulator arm. Because you can just reach out and grab those flying pieces of BE before they get away. Basically, you're already just paying for itself right from the get-go. Now then there's one fun thing with the manipulator arm that most people don't realize, and that is unmarked. When you turn unmarked on, the manipulator will just straight up grab anything that's unmarked, like asteroids or other cosmic events we'll run into eventually, or other ships. And you can also turn it off and it will drop said asteroid, or whatever else. Also, it'll grab uh, asteroid chunks that haven't been identified. Once the chunks get identified, though, then the other settings take over. And since how that's an iron chunk, its information pane has been collapsed. Because it's not valuable. 
or well, it's not, it doesn't meet the settings that I've set to be, have its window open because I know it's not valuable. So here's a good example. So that's only a $500 chunk. So I can go into my geologist tab and be like, I only want to grab things that are worth 3000 or more. And I only want information panes open if they're worth 3000 or more. And now, not only will the manipulator arm let go of that chunk, but it'll also collapse the information pane. So there's a good use of that geologist tab right there. Getting really unlucky with those BE chunks, they just go. You can tell it's BE because they're blue. Light blue. And hopefully an event will spawn in that I can take advantage of, but I'm not really set up for it just yet, so maybe I just need to get another good haul in. But maybe I'll get lucky, who knows. It's only 152 chunk of BE, it's not going to be worth a whole lot. Well, I'm going to check my LiDAR screen to see if there are any contacts around me preventing events from spawning in and I didn't see anything. So I should be deep enough into the rings to be getting random events. And when one of those happens, I'll let you know. There's a very easy way to identify when a random event around you is happening. Oh, here we go. A random event is happening. Can you see why there's a random event happening? And if you identify it as the blue halos that are f closing in on my ship, yeah, that'd be it. You can also hear it. And if I look at my LiDAR, I saw that there was a large something that just spawned in. This is extra hilarious because it wasn't there. We basically went in a straight line. So something spawned in from where I was, <laughs> from a path that basically I've already traveled. And so this is a moonlet. And you want to look around the moonlets when you find one. Because sometimes, it's not going to be this one, but sometimes there will be caves. And inside those caves could be untold riches. We'll get there when I, when we get there though. This time I don't think there's any untold riches on the inside. You can't really do anything with these moonlets. You can't blow them up or do anything. They just serve as like uh, quick jump in points. That's their other function is they 
they could just be a giant space rock, and all they serve is like a uh, landmark, basically, in space. Somewhere you can identify where you're going. But since I don't have an astrogator, this one's probably not going to be saved in the astrogation book to make for a quick navigation later. And the reason you would want to keep places like this for quick navigation for later is maybe you find one of these really deep out into the ring. Navigating to one of these navigation points will not cost you as much as if you're just randomly jumping to something. If you do it right. Or actually, it won't, it'll barely cost you anything if you do it right. We'll get there, I'll show you. There's a right way to jump into the rings and then get in deep into the rings, and there's a wrong way. Yeah. Let's keep moving deeper. Now we need to move away from this moonlit because it was an event and it won't spawn in another event until I move further away. This is actually a little dense section of asteroids here, so just set up shop here real quick and see if I can't extract some some currency out of this. Now some people really hate the manipulator arm because it looks funny, it throws you off, or whatever excuse they have, but I really like this thing. Not only because it grabs those resources that I'm chasing down, but there is an even better reason to always have one. And I'm hoping one of those events will show up and then I can tell you why. And then actually provide an example. That's a chunk of BE. And it decided to randomly fly off right into my engine when that asteroid broke apart. And then I touched it with my thruster again and it went flying even again. BE's a fickle thing to get. Sometimes you get blessed and it's just easy to grab. Sometimes it just launches it off itself off into deep space and there's nothing you can do about it. Well, not this early. This is kind of pitiful richness right here. What is that?
Hmm. For some reason, the right side of these asteroids are turning yellow. Which usually means that somebody is... Um... They're gonna try to Star Wars you, basically. And by, by that I mean they're gonna try to launch their ship directly through yours via hyperspace and rip your ship in half. But it's not giving off that weird warning. So that's interesting. Usually it gives off like a little text blurb that's like warning clear out of the way because someone's trying to hyperspace jump basically right next to you. It's probably not called that because the people who make this game want to sound realistic as possible, but that's the way it makes the most sense the easiest. Here's a new contact. Let's see if that's an actual ship or if what that is. Oh, that's a bounty hunter ship. So if I talk to him... And then tell them I'm interested in bounty hunting with them. Then, what this is, this guarantees now that there will be a combat event. A combat event, I should say. So now all I gotta do is follow this guy around, basically, and eventually a combat event will spawn in. Like that. The Red Rings of Death have shown up, and I'm not maneuvering anything, so I know that a combat event is nearby. And there's the target. Oof, I really need a better power generator, because the one I'm using sucks. That guy is showing off his reactor and his main thruster, which is a really bad idea in this game. If you point your reactor at somebody, because then they just shoot you in the reactor, like so. Now you'll notice that the pirate will try to run away now. His whole life objective is not to shoot at me anymore. All he wants to do is get away, get away, get away, fly away. Just like you've probably been doing this whole game if, you, if you've randomly gotten attacked and your last ditch effort is to run away, run away, run away. So he'll try to speed off in one direction in a straight line and fly away. So now all I'm trying to do is follow him, chase him down to the point where his ship disables because his reactor is probably going to go critical. But now he's not even trying to maneuver anymore. So once they get into that getaway stage, all you have to do is wait for their ship to basically fully go disabled. And then the beauty of this is that you can grab them with your manipulator arm. Ta-da! You now have a free ship. I'm trying not to hit them with the thrusters, because you can blow their ship up if you hit them with your thrusters too much. Now all I gotta do is take it back to the station. That is why you always want a manipulator arm. So this is my second dive into the rings, and I'm already coming back with a free ship. And it's not registered here as a pure profit, and I'll show you why. 
because now I can go down to the dealer tab. It should be listed in here. Hey, where's my free ship? <laughs> really? Well, usually they, the combat event ships get listed in here after you bring them back. They even told me I acquired the ship. But I'm not seeing it in the list. And then you can sell it off to make quite a hefty chunk of profit. But I'm still I still made 70,000 off of that. And as you can see, I didn't take too much damage. If the onboard computer got 1% damage. So there you go. That was pretty easy. Even though I just got scammed out of that ship, but hey, whatever. Let me upgrade the turbine and the ultra capacitor, and maybe I won't run out of power when I'm trying to fight someone now. And then let's take a look at my reactor core and see if I can't get more fuel rods. Doesn't look like I can. So I'll look for more crewmates, see if I want anything. Uh, Astrogator that's self-taught, no experience, perfect. And for a very good price. That's a pretty good price for a mechanic, even though he's got journeyman experience. Now all I need is a pilot. Well, need is a very strong word. But now that I have a mechanic, I can start giving them mechanic experience by telling them to fix stuff. All these services go on cooldown. How interesting. Let's see if I can get these people to be happy. But I think they changed something like that in recent patch notes, so I'm not going to waste a whole bunch of time on that. Because crew morale does play a little bit of effect on what's happening in game, but eh, not in a lot. Okay, so here we are again. And now I can show you how to get back deeper into the rings. It's not by initially jumping, because that'll cost you an arm or leg. But if you find some place like this moonlit out in the rings that are usually deeper, from there you can just plot a course. And all it'll take is a little bit of propellant to go back to that uh, object or moonlet that you found that's out deep in the rings. But since that moonlet wasn't very deep into the rings, eh, I don't really want to waste my time. What I could do is talk to other pilots right next to me now. Because I just wanted to show you what it's like to not talk to these people, but usually I can squeeze information out of people like doing this, and then they'll have just a little dialogue back and forth, and then I can squeeze information out of these people like new astrogation contacts.
Okay, so they've had their pleasantries or whatever. No of any trade opportunities? Oh, well. This is, I guess, the first thing to this quest line. So, it wasn't a contact, but that was like a... That kicked off a quest line. So now I have basically an open quest. And I'll wait for the channel to close before I can ping the next person. And start pumping him full for uh, information. But now this person will basically follow me around. And eventually if I just fly around and do my own thing for long enough, they'll leave me alone. But basically they'll, they'll fly around and act like a bodyguard for me for a little while. Don't forget, I have to come back in and turn unmarked off so the arm won't grab random rocks. It gets annoying, but you get used to it after a while. got a big lidar contact cool and it's you know it's really deep into the rings so instead of wasting my time over here looking for something cool to find I can tell the autopilot to basically just <laughs> spend the next 10 minutes floating in a direction and fast travel to deeper in the rings and it doesn't cost me anything but propellant and time so that's how you get further into the rings or deep into the rings without paying a ton of money and then there's supposed to be a big lidar contact and if we look up there there's solid white lines close by so we'll just move towards that carefully it could be a bad thing or a good thing it looks like a moonlit Cool, it's a moonlight. Oh, and it's the most common and boringest of moonlets. You notice how you couldn't see in here until I got around to the cave entrance? And then if you actually come in here all the way to this manipulator arm, you can dock and make your crew happy by letting them have a drink for $200. Yay, my crew just got morale. And then I can leave. That was exciting. I, I got my whole crew tipsy on 200 bucks and they got a little happier. So cool. Now I want to get away from this useless moonlit. Or I should say the space bar now. To let other events spawn in. And maybe find, now that we're much further into the rings than what I normally would have gone. Now we can see how much more valuable each piece of ore that comes out of a rock is. Or ice asteroid, I should say. And what do you know? Even though I'm deeper into the rings, none of these pieces of asteroid are worth anything. Well, they're worth something, but they're not worth enough to venture all the way out here on just a whim. Especially if I'm looking for valuable chunks of asteroid. Maybe that was just unlucky, but 
that's kind of been the experience so far is yes more more or less the the further you go into the rings the more valuable stuff is but it's not like so valuable that you should do it right away it's more like if you kind of have the opportunity maybe you might have a chance to find something valuable I got that garbage. Yeah, that chunk of B E was valuable. But now I'm now I'm doing the thing I shouldn't do, which is chase the BE halfway through the asteroids at higher speeds. I guarantee if I smack one of those asteroids it, that value that of the BE that I was chasing is just gone right out the window as soon as I destroy my ship. Luckily I kinda know what I'm doing. Manipulator your arm can't figure out where to drop the ore because I'm moving. Two thousand or more of a kilogram of something valuable, like V, will end up being well, at least worth enough value to pick up. I'm actually going to increase what I'm looking for to a minimum of five thousand. That way, I guarantee everything I pick up is at least worth something. Oh, I forgot to go over the tuning screen. That should be its a video all on its own, but... The tuning screen is how you really open this game up and make it your own. So I'll be covering that next, when we go back. I think I'll chop the videos up, and that way the me going over the tuning the tuning screen can be its own video that people can just jump right in to. Don't let that get away too far, it might be worth chasing.
You know, it's my geologist being lazy and not identifying what's around the ship, even though it's right next to the ship. That's annoying. Hmm. There's another ship just above me. I think it's another ship. Is it someone I've already talked to? No. There's also a y unidentified object around somewhere. <laughs> Both of these options are nothing interesting will either happen. And they'll probably follow me around if I check these options, so I guess I'll go with this one. So now they just opened up like a mini quest basically to just talk to one of the salvage ops barges. And I can waste my one time I get to talk to a salvage barge to advance a mini quest that will ultimately give me nothing. Oh, a combat event. And I bet they're fighting that other ship up there. Either that or they'll pop into view here soon. Let's go check it out. I could see a microwave beam. Oh. I guess not. You know, it's funny, you've got crew members on the ship that probably spotted that combat event that was coming in. And they could probably point out exactly where it is. Hello. And you could probably, your crew members could probably be like, hey, there's a hostile ship coming right at us. And then they put up that warning indicator around your ship, and you're like, yeah, hostile ship. Okay, where is it? Oh, we're not going to tell you that. You have to look for yourself. It's like, what? If there's like a hostile ship or an event you noticed enough enough to show an indicator on the screen, the least you could do is like point out exactly where the event is coming from, right? But nope, that's not how this game works because uh, because reasons. Warnings show up on your screen or uh, ambiguous warnings that are like, hey, there's an event somewhere around you. But uh, instead of pointing you at the event that we're triggering the alarm for, we're just going to let you guess and figure out. Which is kind of dumb, in my opinion, but what do you do? You'll notice I did take damage right there, and I misaligned one of my engine, or my only engine, my main engine. And now I just open up my band-aid screen and drag the bar up until it turns green again. And I never think about it ever again. Unless it gets more damaged, but... Yep, that's the only purpose of the band-aid screen. Sometimes holding your mouse over unidentified pieces of ore will get your geologist to wake up and do their job. But most of the time your geologist is asleep at the wheel. And it doesn't matter how experienced they are, they continually fail at their job. It's like, hey, that piece of BE that's going to fly away really fast, could you identify that before it gets out of visual range for you? And maybe slap a price to it? Because you could tell which, which pieces of... Uh, which pieces of ore around us are valuable just by the color scheme assigned to them. So instead of identifying that 
fiftieth piece of iron that's a pile of shit that I don't want. How about identifying the blue chunk that came out alongside it first? Oh yeah, that one's going straight for that asteroid. And it's not worth anything. See, like that. Geologist doesn't want to wake up now. They're too busy sleeping. There's nothing to do in the band-aid screen, even though the top right shows yellow. The band-aid screen shows all green, so playing around with those sliders isn't going to do anything. Can you tell that there's a random event happening? I wonder what it is. There's a very not subtle hint on my screen. And there should be a very loud, there should be a very annoying amount of beeping happening. That all of a sudden, there's a random event. And if I look over on my LiDAR, there's some words there. Let's fly over there and find out what this is. There, letters. Oh look, a life pod. And if I want my manipulator pod or manipulator arm to grab it, I have to turn on unmarked. There's somebody alive in there. And here's a fun little thing you can do with excavators that are beaks. Is you can close the beak on the life pod. Boost forward to shove all your cargo further down into the back. Open up the beak and close it again. And now I've got a life pod firmly lodged into my cargo hold. 
But because I've done that, it's going to make even gathering up more ore a pain in the butt. So now I just take my ill-gotten gains, that life pod, back to the station. I was also getting pretty low on propellant there, but oh well. I guarantee if you were flying on autopilot that whole time, you would have gone back much faster than I did because you would have been out of propellant. Oh, everybody's happy now. So I got a nice fat 50G from, uh, or 50, 50K from saving life pod. And I got a, basically a lot more than that from um, gathering up ore. So yeah, that's how you do that. And everybody's happy, not because I rescued that life pod, but because we stopped at the uh, space bar earlier. And they got a morale boost from drinking in space. Because they're alcoholics. And now I'm getting experience for my mechanic. I tell him to fix everything. Eventually he'll level up. Oh, and they just lost their happiness buff because we spent too long doing that. <laughs> so I'll go back into the equipment tab, look for some other stuff I want to upgrade. I want to upgrade my propellant tank. I would also like to upgrade my reaction control system, but. Ooh, it's the one I want, and it takes a lot of power. And a lot of heat. And I don't think there's one that's as efficient as the one I'm using. No. So pretty much until I'm ready to get what I want. I just want to stick to the base ones because they're the most efficient fuel using or fuel usage that I have right now. I can upgrade my reactor core and I will. Can't get the military grade turbine yet. Ooh, but I can get the triple ultra capacitor, that'll help. So the, the difference here is that this one has no gimbal system, and this one has a gimbal system, but they both shoot projectiles at 4,500 meters per second, whereas this one shoots projectiles at 3,000 meters per second, so slower. And they shoot the same 10 kilogram projectile. And this was, in, this is intended, quote unquote, strictly for asteroid use to shoot asteroids and break them apart. But I find that the mass drivers are really good for just combat. And I'll go into the tuning screen real quick and make it even better for combat. Because I haven't been using any weapons to mine. I've been using my thrusters. And it's worked out pretty good. I could even get a second mass driver and I'll be even more deadly in combat. Yay! Now the most important screen in the game, probably one of the more important ones, is the tuning screen. And so the lower I put this, the slower I'll accelerate. And the higher I put this, the faster I'll accelerate. 
and usually the more you accelerate the more just normal wear and tear damage you put on something and the less you get the idea and then I can reset it to default with this button so that's uh, that's how that goes right now I'm, I'm used to flying the starter ship like this so I'll just leave it uh, when you click on any slider bar you'll notice that the top the description at the top changes and then all of these descriptions are terribly worded to only be read by smart people this is a smart people description of what this does only for smart people and so to actually figure out what this bar does or any of these bars uh, you'll have to look at you'll have to go ask the YouTube or you'll have to go look on YouTube to figure out what some of these descriptions will do or go ask in the discord hey what is this what does this slider actually do because these are two smart descriptions for two smart people who only program all day or whatever they do so what this bar does is the mass driver luckily this one's pretty straightforward if higher values mean more suitable as defensive equipment what that really means is it's actually more suitable for offense when you're going to go shoot another ship. So basically, the more you put into this slider, the better they are at killing other ships. While the less you put into this driver, or the, the slider here, the mass drivers will be more suitable for shooting asteroids. Because they will shoot slower or less powerful or whatever to break apart the asteroids more gently. More violent, more gently, you get it. What does it do per tick? It doesn't tell you. That would be that would be too smart to actually tell you what each slider does per tick of the slider. That's too uh, that's too genius IQ right there. They can't break it down that easily. And I'm not gonna mess with the autopilot right now because the autopilot I have is kind of poop and then messing with the rest of those options isn't necessary for now once I get a good autopilot I'll get more into a lot of those options well you'll notice now I have a known contact out here somewhere to astrogate to is the space bar if I even try to jump out there it'll cost me basically all of the money I have or double the money of I, what I had so I can actually get out here a much cheaper way without doing that. And you notice the further and further I go into here, the more expensive it gets. Right now I'm just going to reset. And the only reason I'm spending this much money is because I refilled on my mass driver ammo and propellant. So the smart way to get deeper into the rings is I'll show you real quick. So the first thing I'm going to do, or what I usually do once I start getting upgraded, is I'll just start flying into the rings, and instead of looking for a better payout through uh, asteroids that'll pay me more if I break them apart, what I'm doing is I'm looking at my LiDAR for other ships so I can extract as much information, information out of them as possible before I move on to the area I'm really going to go to. I forgot to talk to them. Let's see here. If you pay people uh, money or help them with their repairs, they'll come and pay you back later. But it's not a lot. So 
right now I can just advance the quest one real quick. Or mini quest one. Maybe I'll get some information to go to a contact further out, but not really. Usually those ones don't really do anything consequential later on. Eventually you start completing mini quest lines eventually, but none of them are very useful or valuable just yet. I forgot to respond again. So he just said check the salvage job. So now I, I really have the quest to, for the same guy to uh, bother salvage jobs again. And I gotta wait for them to close the comms channel before I can check on my second contact here. And you'll notice this line says that you have to go deeper into the rings. You really don't. So what we're looking for is a single, the single letter, or the single word options, which is usually someone's name. And then I'll have a pointless conversation about, your hair looks nice today, and then you can ask them, hey, any trade opportunities around? And they'll be like, yeah, sure. Here's a, a LiDAR contact we picked up. And that's usually what I'm after. Oh yeah, sometimes there's some winching too. Hey, you didn't pay me enough, and then you won't get a LiDAR contact out of it. Sometimes you will, sometimes you won't. Cool. Looks like I'm not going to get a LiDAR contact. So now that they've got their whinging out of the way, I could just move on into the rings deeper and like this is just how fast you want the ship to fly out there. So this will take me 12 hours to get there. This will take me two hours, but I have to maintain that course for like just until the it pilots that course. So I like to go halfway and then I have to stay on this course and I can't let any asteroids or other ships into this. <coughs> phallus looking uh, shape until the ship's done calculating a course. So basically everyone's going to go take a nap for four hours and the ship's just going to drift in that direction for four hours. <laughs> Hopefully the geologist actually takes a nap so they can do their job when we get there. There you go. Now we'll fast travel. And that's that's how you get deeper into the rings without spending all of your money. Because now I still have $27,000 $27, to do whatever I want with. And time still passes by, so one day out of the month, your crew gets paid. So if you're out here in the rings, they still get paid that one day of the month. So sometimes you'll have less money than you expected. It's probably because your crew expected a payment. Wow, an all iron asteroid. That sucks.
let's see, we'll start mining here at the next largest chunk because I want to get away from the space bar so that way other events start spawning in. So that's why I'm moving away, even though I could have set up shop and started mining. This should be good enough to start. Ooh, I guess not. That 3,000 should be worth something. Nice, good miss again. Ship's barely moving, but the yeah, manipulator arm can't figure it out. There we go. And all this is just manually flying. I'm not using autopilot at all. Because A, my autopilot isn't smart enough take advantage of all the advanced features like advanced autopilots are, but I just don't need it. <laughs> but I, I also don't have parts that an advanced autopilot could use right now anyway. I'll get to it eventually. Well, I'm getting really unlucky with all these ore chunks, even though I'm deep into the rings and there should be rich ore values all around. Yeah. And this is the same for even if you go further into the rings, even if you go all the way to the very end of the rings. It's really just hit or miss if you're going to get anything worth the value. The best thing that happens is usually you'll find a cluster of like one rich resource and it'll be fairly rare most notably all these asteroids seem to be rich in iron which is not the greatest actually that's really bad for me i should probably leave this area In fact, I am going to leave this area because it is garbage. That was interesting. Oh, there it is. I 
I'm not trying to go further to the right because that's the empty space. Or that's a, a dead spot, basically, a pocket in the ring where there's nothing. There's no asteroids. Which is very useful later on if you're just farming for events, but that's not what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for just empty space to farm events in. I'm looking for asteroids to make money from. And it doesn't look like I'm going fast, but <laughs> it's going well over 100 ms. Which is pretty good. It's a pretty good clip to move at. Ooh, it's looking like this area is rich in W, and that's exactly what you want to see. W is one of the most valuable. And, unlike B, it doesn't go flying off. River is so densely concentrated with iron. That sucks. What happened to that W asteroid then? Come on, Jill, just wake up. A 7,000 chunk of W that's moving in the wrong direction. Me, not worth it. Ooh, that 4,000 chunk is going to be worth something.
the 3000 V? Yep, that's worth it. Well, 3000 kilogram V. I can't believe no events are spawning in. Now remember, I've got this challenging too, so there should be something. I'm playing a game? What are you doing? Mm -hmm. It is. What are you doing? Oh, perfect timing. There's an event happening. And not just any event. Notice that the halo around the screen now isn't question marks, but is instead just long streaks that is the there are dead people floating around outside the ship event and dead people are worth a whole bunch of money in this game well in real life too probably but it's probably a lot more illegal to get those in real life so let's not mess with that just the just in game I'm using my LiDAR to keep track of where all the where all the valuables are because they show up on the LiDAR as their emergency tags or whatever. Their life transponders or whatever it is that keeps me informed of where they are. And for some reason, a dead body is stuck at the very front of the ship. And does not want to go down into the cargo container. be driving some people crazy that I boost forward when I pick something up but I do that so all the cargo gets launched back down further down into the cargo bay otherwise it'll all fly out the front of the ship and I'll lose all my profits let's see did I miss one there's still a halo around so I'm, there might be more to collect Oh, I guess I got them all. But yeah, you want as many as many as, as many of those as you can get. Basically, when that event happens, it's just free money.
Hmm? My geologist is asleep again. Come on, Jal, just I'm doing all this expert piloting and you're just sleeping. <laughs> I'm doing like the best piloting piloting job you've ever seen. And the geologist is just like <laughs> Oh wait, I have a job to do. You're paying me. Huh. Come on. There we go. Ooh, a 900 chunk of BE? <laughs> Hello. Do you hear that noise? That means there's something stuck in my excavator. One of the dead bodies does not want to go down peacefully into the bottom of the cargo hold. And that's why I hate this excavator type on the ship, is because all of everything that you put inside of it gets stuck right at the at the throat, right at the neck. It gets past the mouth, gets stuck in the neck, and then you end up regurgitating it right out of the mouth of the excavator and lose all your profit. Okay, I guess that bee just decided it wanted to not be collect collected. I don't like what that's doing. That light that keeps moving across the ship is a really bad thing, but it's not telling me that I'm in trouble or in danger. So I don't know what that light is. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I need to get out of here. And I need to do it right now.
Now hopefully I, I won't get split in half by a ship in hyperspace. But there's no guarantee. Well, there is a guarantee. It's called getting out of the way. Hello, chunk of BE that's just out here. Geologist, wake up. Come on, man. No, oh, it's only 103 kil kilograms. Mm, nope, not worth it. Not worth getting ran over for. Actually, since I have all these uh, dead bodies in the cargo hold, might as well just take it back to the station for a fat payout. And that'll be a good. That'll be a good payout to uh, make a video on. And and end it there, so let's see how much I make. So as you can see, all those dead bodies made way more profit than the mining was. But the mining still made a fairly good amount, so... I just made a fat chunk of change. Now I can actually start upgrading some of the things on my ship. Let's see here, what was it going to take to get the Agile? It's going to take a reactor upgrade. Let's see if I can actually do that. Oh, I can ha handle the power draw now. But it looks like in the simulation that the reactor temperature won't be able to handle it. So I need to upgrade the reactor. I already have best in slot turbine now, best in slot capacitor. Those are like brain dead upgrades. You just get the most expensive one. Most expensive one more better. What I really want to do is get down here to the Nakamura Dynamics. What I actually want to do is get a better ship. That ship, specifically. The Vulture Prospector variant of the Eagle Prospector. So these ships up here in the top are just to show you that the generic regular ship types, I believe, they, they're they not variants, they're just the standard ship types. And so the dealer always has one standard of each type available. But then if I click on this one down here, this is a variant type. So it has an extra paragraph up here of information. And as you can see, it has a high stress hard point, whereas the regular variant does not it has two drone hard points instead. So yeah, there's a lot of variants for, well actually there's a few variants for each type of ship. Some ships don't have any variants at all. So you could get lucky and find something cool if you really wanted it. Right now my ship's only worth half a mil. So unfortunately I won't be able to get the ship I want. So then I'll just concentrate on upgrading this ship. But that's where I'm going to leave this video for now, the stream for now. Thanks for watching. Maybe I'll make more videos later. We'll see.